Well, this is a highly emotional time. We have returned to the site of my dad's first ever pantomime run. This is where, this is the place, the beautiful city of Bath, the theatre role where my love affair with pantomime really started. Let's go inside and have a look what it's like now. Great. Well, what an amazing setting. We've been fortunate enough to come inside into the auditorium of the Theatre Royal in Bath. Yeah. And uh, it must bring back quite a few memories. It certainly does. I stood on this stage for that first pantomime, Puss in Boots, in uh, 1968, and looking out at that wonderful auditorium, which really hasn't changed all that much. And I remember Frank Maddox's mother, uh, Nellie Maddox, was our wardrobe supervisor. Yeah. And uh, she used to stand in that doorway up the back there with the doors open and you could see the light behind her. So she was always in silhouette uh, watching us on stage now and again. And I think it was during our second season here. It may have been our third season. I can't remember. But sadly, Nellie Maddox died. And people still said on stage, when they were on stage, they, could, they thought they could see her, her silhouette still standing in that door <laughs> watching us. Well, this is an emotional moment. This so, was your dressing room for four of your first five pantomime seasons. That's right, those four pantomimes we did for Frank Maddox, we were always up here, level with the fly floor. There's the fly door over there, which um, leads to the guys who used to lower the cloths and pull the cloths up. And we This is number six now, but it wasn't that when you had No, it. I'm sure it was number eight then. <laughs> we used to have a gas fire in there. That's when we, uh, you'd light the gas fire and every so often a mouse would come in and visit us. <laughs> Unbelievable, but there, yeah, it's that quite was high up on this level, isn't it? Often, as near you are to the stage, that shows your importance to the show. Exactly, that's why we were always up here. <laughs> yeah, but I do remember the, the dressing room beneath us, on the next floor down, was the number one, or the or the top of the bill was always in right. there. Jimmy yeah. Mack was in there, and one year we had a great comic called Ronnie Collis, who was in there, and in between the uh, matinee show and the evening show, Ronnie had a sleep in his room and no one checked on him at all and we, we started the second show in the evening and suddenly we heard over the tannoy mr collis this is your call and nothing happened mr collis this is ronnie collis you're on stage and we suddenly heard his dressing room door slam and rushing down the stairs <laughs> and we went down to look at him and he was on stage in his trousers and a jumper and his carpet slip as he'd been sound asleep in his room <laughs> What are your sort of most vivid memories about being on stage or any particular routines that stand out that you did or moments you remember above others? I don't know. Well, I remember because Frank Maddox used to write uh, the pantomimes and they all had original songs in them that he wrote. Yeah. I remember there was one song called Roll All Your Troubles in a Snowball and that changed into a slightly... Uh, risque lyrics which we've all finished up singing on stage which must have gone across to the audience quite incredible <laughs> uh, uh, we also did because uh, jimmy mack when we started here he was the principal comic and he got uh, alan and i into comedy sketches we did the lemon table sketch here which was an older abbott and costello routine and of course we did the awkward squad and in one panto i remember suddenly the principal girl said i know let's all go to the deep south <laughs> and for some unknown reason, we did an 18-minute minstrel show, <laughs> which oh. was absolutely nothing to do with the pantomime. Well, excitingly, we've been allowed right up into the gods here, into the fly floor backstage. We and are. this is quite uh, an exciting piece of theatre history right behind us there. It really is. This is the butterfly that uh, was created when Reg Maddox ran the theatre. That was Frank's father. Uh, he had this built for a production of Aladdin and uh, Reg sadly died during that production. And uh, the thing about the butterfly suddenly became a, a major story because Frank Maddox, every year after that, a real butterfly used to appear in the theater at some point during the pantomime run. And Frank Maddox, although he never told us this, we were told he believed that that butterfly was a reincarnation of his father. Wow. So he all, it always brought him good luck. Whenever the butterfly appeared, he knew he was going to have a successful run. And one of the years, I think it was the second year we were here, 
I saw this Red Admiral flying about and I went to F Frank's office, always called him Mr. Maddox, all the years we were here, all the years we knew him. Yeah. He was Mr. Maddox, never Frank. <laughs> Uh, and I said, Mr. Maddox, I've just seen the butterfly. He said, what? Where? Where? And I had to take him and show him where I'd seen it. I'm sure he didn't believe me at first. I said, I promise you it was a Red Admiral. And great, we had a very successful season. Oh, and the only season he didn't see it, it appeared every year, apparently. Uh, the only time he didn't see it, it wasn't a year when we were here, but they had terrible, terrible snow in Bath and the coach parties that had booked couldn't or were going to book couldn't get through uh, and money had to be refunded so right. it, it was a financial disaster for him and that was the one year he didn't see the butterfly. Well, but I think it's absolutely incredible that after all this time this has been kept. Yeah and maintained and yeah. treated with a lot of respect yeah. still absolutely brilliant. It is fantastic. So, so what pantomimes was it you did here? Puss in Boots was the first. Puss in Boots was the first one uh, I think the second one was uh, Little Bo Peep and Her Sheep. Then we did Jack and Jill. Yeah. And we did Goldilocks and the Three Bears. They were the and four we did here. And then over 10 years later, Mother Goose with Danny LaRue. With Danny LaRue in 1986. Yeah, yeah we came here. 1986 into 87, we did uh, Mother Goose, yeah, with Danny. And it had already been a refurbished then, so it's like it. It is now. Right. Here we are at the stage door. Yeah, we stopped off here. Yeah. No one's waiting for our autograph now, so it doesn't mean a thing, I believe. <laughs> I'm just thinking, but when we were here with that first production of uh, Puss in Boots, we had an act called the Trio Silvanus, who rode bikes, and we also had the Three Biasini. It was the same act, the same three people doing two different acts. One that was a, ba a balancing act, yeah, or on bikes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one day they put a five pound note down with a bit of cotton and Peter Dare, who was playing the Baron, as he came upstairs, he saw this five pound, went to pick it up and they pulled it out of his way with the cotton and they went into hysterics. They thought it was a really funny joke. And Peter, who, you know, obviously wished he hadn't done anything yeah, yeah. about it, he said, no, no, he said, I have lost a five. I'm really upset about it. Tried to say things. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Brilliant. <laughs> Great moment. But do you remember that? That's quite an amazing sight, that massive chandelier yeah, in the middle of the ceiling. Yeah, that's that was there. beautiful. Yeah, it is, isn't it? But the whole, if we just step back and let you look at the auditorium like that, it is, it is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. And it's still that, uh, what did Joe say it holds? About 900. 900. It's still an intimate atmosphere because you're so close to the audience. Mind you, we used to have a, uh, an orchestra in the pit, about an eight-piece orchestra led by Noel Vincent who had been MD for Bud Flanagan at one time. And Bud oh, wow. Flanagan actually went into Noel Vincent and sang him the tune he'd just dreamed up. And it was underneath the arches. So Noel uh -huh. Vincent was the first person to ever write that out in musical form. He wrote it down for Bud Flanagan. Amazing. And his, Noel Vincent's wife was Peggy Bourne, who was a juggler. And all the plot in the pantomimes here for Frank Maddox were in rhyming couplets. And she had the line to say, the witch is dead and duty calls, so now I'll juggle with my balls. <laughs> and that was meant to be serious. No one laughed at that when we did the read through. But Everyone, you couldn't help yourself with the actual no, show. Alan and I were stifling laughter at a rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we'll leave it there and maybe have a look around the town, which you say from the last time you've been here, which is probably over 25 years, yeah. has changed quite a bit. Yeah, it certainly has. Incredible. Fantastic. But, uh, though, I just great, love this place. Great experience. It certainly is, yeah. Dreams come true and couplets run in the land of pantomime.